Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm going to show you guys how to stack and fill a cake. So I do what's called a four-layer tort, which means I have four layers of cake and three layers of filling. So I've got some of my filling here and my buttercream, so we're going to get started. I'm doing a chocolate cherry cake today, so I like to use a flavored syrup just to go along with it. So this is a Kirsch syrup. And the best part about syruping is A, it helps keep moisture in your cake and it also can infuse a lot of flavor. One thing I like to do is called docking. This is actually a dough docker. They use it for pizza dough to kind of like knock it down. It's also great for poking holes in the surface of your cake so your syrup really gets into the cake. So before we start, go ahead and dock this guy. We'll do all these little guys down here too. You can just buy these at restaurant supply stores. You see, it just leaves a couple little holes in there. A little bit of syrup. This chocolate cake is really moist on its own, so I don't have to go crazy with the syrup. I'm just using it for flavor. So I've got my Italian meringue buttercream in a piping bag with an 805 tip is what I like to use. It's a round tip. And I'll use that to pipe my dam all the way around and then I'll kind of press it down a little bit harder to lay down a layer of buttercream first and then I'll add my cherry filling so I'll go ahead and smooth this guy down making room for my yummy cherry filling I always do, if I'm doing a fruit filling, I like to do it over a buttercream or a cream cheese or something that's more of a firm filling, just because it's easier for your clients to slice it later, because just solid layers of fruit can get a little bit squishy and tend to fall apart as you cut it. The buttercream kind of helps keep everything together. Take my cherry filling all the way out to my dam. And then just to ensure that there's no leakage whatsoever, I like to take my spatula and just run around the outside of the cake, kind of pushing my dam up a little bit, ensuring that it's all the way over the cherry. And I'll very lightly smooth it down, even it out. And this just makes sure that nothing's gonna leak out. So if you've got a very soft filling like a curd or a mousse, you know it's gonna stay inside. And so you can either go and put this in the fridge for a few minutes to let the buttercream get hard if it's really warm outside. It's actually really cold in the studio today, so I'm just going to go for my next one. So I've already got this guy docked right on top. Again with my Kirsch syrup. Pipe your bag. Pipe your dam. Fill it. I like using a piping bag with my buttercream to fill just because it's a lot faster. And when you're doing tons and tons of tears, it just makes life a lot easier. Time is of the essence. Yep. Some more fruit. If you want to get really scientific with it, you can actually weigh out how much fruit you want for each tier. I'm not that scientific. I don't think your clients are that either, but some people like very, very perfect layers. Push up your dam. If you notice how I'm holding my spatula, I'm using the bent part. That's actually the correct way to hold a spatula. A lot of people hold it like this, and it's very bad for your wrists. So hold it like that. <laughs> Smooth down. And go in for your next tier. And you repeat this, of course, for the next tier and the next tier.
So there you go. There's our cake torted and filled. So now we're going to give it a nice crumb coat. I always want to crumb coat it before I go and put a final ice on it to cold carve later. Um, I like to cold carve my Italian meringue buttercream. So we're just going to give it a quick icing. And for that, I like to do it the old fashioned way, meaning scoop it out of the mixer, dump it on top. But you can notice how soft my buttercream is. You really want it the consistency of mayonnaise when you work with it. It doesn't matter if you're using a meringue or a crusting buttercream. Even crusting buttercream, I know people use it very, very dry and very, very cold. You want it to be warm and spreadable. Same thing goes if you're doing this with ganache. Um, you can always do this with ganache. You want to have it be the consistency of peanut butter when you work with it. Because then it just spreads all nice and pretty. I'm just going to bang my top down. Once again, you can see how I'm holding my spatula. You want to have the arc facing in. It just has to do with your wrist, because this way it's actually a very nice continuous thing of the wrist. When you go this way, you have to pull your elbow up. You can see, I can actually see under my elbow. And it's just really uncomfortable. And the biggest thing in this industry is take care of your body, people. And wrists are a very important part of life in this industry, so you might want to be nice to them so that you can keep them for a while longer. Good advice from Casey. Of course, if you're not, some people prefer to use a straight spatula. I always use an offset. If you're using a straight spatula, there's only one way to hold it. So this is just the offset spatula rule. So I'm not trying to be pretty. I'm just trying to get a crumb coat on there. Or dirty ice, depends on who you talk to. Or a, like ceiling ice, all the names. Basically the same thing. And then I'll just give it a quick run with my bench scraper just to really smooth out the sides. Get a nice even coat on there. Tra -la, la Go ahead and smooth out the top a little bit. And then I'm going to take this cake and my expander to the fridge to set up before we put on another coat of icing to cold carve. So off we go.